Thank you very much for joining today. Uh, we are going to talk about big data made easy with a small spark. Um, this talk is spreading over three sessions. Um, so it will take a lot of time. We will have breaks in the middle, okay? So, and you, during the break, uh, at least during the first break, you will have a, a little bit of homework uh, just to make sure we catch up. I'm trying to make this talk as, um, as um, interactive as possible. Um, so do not hesitate to, to stop me. We're kind of building on top of one another of, of, what we are, of what we are doing. So it might just be very, it can actually be very complex at some point if we, you know, if we lose track. Um, okay, so let's get it. Okay, getting started. A quick intro. Uh, so my name is Jean-Georges or JG Perrin. Um, I've been in software since 1983. Uh, I was 12. Um, but um, I like to say that I'm making money since normally 95. And same thing with big data and AI. The funny, funny anecdote about big data is that, of course, the terms was not coined at all. But when I was 13, um, I wanted to track uh, park meters, traffic lights, uh, and, and all this kind of uh, smart city uh, environment and collect all of that uh, on, and to make sure that we would live in a safer world. Um, that was with my, um, <laughs> that was with my Atari 800 Excel at that time, uh, with 64 kilobyte of memory. So needless to say that it was definitely not a success. Um, I've been an IBM champion for 12 years. That's something I'm uh, a little bit proud of. Uh, IBM champions are total leaders and uh, uh, people recognized by the, by the IBM community for, for, for the contribution uh, in the industry and for IBM. And uh, it, it's something I kind of uh, look forward to. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at JG Perrin. I've got a blog at jgp.ai, which I must admit I'm not really up to date with. Uh, and uh, recently in the rally Dura Maria, we created a hub for La French Tech, which is an interesting way to, to gather French entrepreneurs and technologists uh, in, 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 in the US and in France and uh, to create a network with, with, with uh, people uh, here or in the US. I am uh, I'm living in North Carolina in a town called Chapel Hill, which is uh, not too far away from uh, Durham and uh, Raleigh, if you're familiar with them. So I, I work for a company called um, Advanced Auto Parts. Uh, it's a great company to work for. I, I, I love it. Uh, we just made an announcement about open source uh, not even a, uh, an hour ago, uh, I I would really invite you to 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 check it out uh, because because it's something it's something kind of fun, um, and um, uh, I am also the author of uh, Spark in Action, the second edition. Uh, so people. Are, telling, are saying that I'm an expert at Spark. I don't know if I'm an expert at Spark, but at least I, I read the book. I had a lot of pleasure writing it and I have a lot of pleasure sharing and talking about it. And well, it gave me some credentials to give talks and stuff like that. Uh, so, okay, all the marketing bullshit is gone. Uh, let, let's, get, let's, get to, let's get to the thing. I, I designed this to be a hands-on tutorial. Okay, so the first, so during the, so it's really about tr you trying as I talk, as we are going through it. Unfortunately, uh, it's, there's, there's, I don't know you, um, I, I'd love to know you more. Um, I'd love to see a little intro, if you can, in, in the chat. Uh, um, and, um, and uh, so, so just feel feel free feel free uh, feel free to chat to tell me a little bit if you have any experience with Spark, if what you've been doing, what's your background. That would be super helpful to kind of tailor a little bit of content and make it a little bit more interesting for you. Um, we um, so if you have a screen sharing technology, uh, 
just uh, just just try uh, go there and uh, uh, screen capture. Just just make a screen cap of that, or go to jdp.net slash ato to install the the um, uh, to uh, uh, to to download to to know what to do and to get started with the code. Uh, so that will be that will be a little bit helpful. Oh, okay. So I see a few questions. Yes, when I made dollar superior to zero, that's when I started making money. Um, before that, it was just called allowance and depending on my parents. Not that I did not depend on my parents after, but that's another debate. That's another story. Um, the yeah, so. Uh, the URL of David's URL for the announcement, uh, you'll find that in if you look for advanced other part or in the all things open um, website, you 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 will you will see that. I don't have a quick link like there to share you. Uh, and uh, yeah, Sumanta, you have been using Hadoop and you want to learn more about Spark. Yeah, uh, that's perfect. I'm I'm glad that you're seeing the the light at the end of the tunnel and that you finally see that Hadoop is not definitely not the way to go for anything. So uh yeah well uh david if, if you want to go to our shop it, it's all fine you, you can go to our shop and buy stuff as well while we talk i mean that's it, paying my salary with that so okay so I, i'd like to know a little bit about you as well so um guys uh who has experience with with spark go go ahead use use the chat any experience i like when nobody has experience like it means that i can say anything and nobody nobody uh th thanks actually uh, thanks, Alex. Friends and Cap. Thanks, David. Oh, David, you're very little. Okay. Uh, okay, great. Um, that's that's great. That that's 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 great. Uh, I've got to be careful about Molly. She she seems to have a little bit of experience with PySpark. Okay. Uh, and Greg, yeah, no experience, just curiosity. That's fine. Okay. Who has? Uh, uh, okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I, I, lo I love that. Okay, we, we can we can make it interactive. It will work. Okay, um, does anyone has experience with Hadoop? I see that at least, uh, oh, John has, Matt, G, ooh, Jennifer, no, no, Jennifer, is, it's, it's okay. Okay, so, um, okay. So the, do, do the guys who have experience with Hadoop, did you like your experience with Hadoop? I'm curious. If you, if you, if you, if you, um, okay. So I don't know. I don't know if they like it or they hate it. So, yeah. So, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I, I think uh, H, HGFS is good too. Uh, let's go with Scala. Anyone experience with Scala? Yeah, Alex, I'm I'm all completely with you. Out of it is good enough. Okay, so we're not going to use Scala in any of the examples there. Uh, any experience with Java? Okay, good, good, good. Uh, okay. And is there any PHP guru? <laughs> Actually, uh, it, it's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be Java, but Java's great. Okay, well, that was a trick question anyway because we are not going to use any PHP. Okay, any front end developers? Okay, um, yeah, front end you you will suffer a little bit. Okay, so but anyway, most importantly, and last question before we can go more deeper in the subject. Who is not a developer here? Do we have no developers here? Okay, see Simon. Well, you know, those days they are DevOps. So Greg, what are you? <laughs> test, test. In an agile world, test is developer, is software engineer, enterprise architect. Oh my God. A peer, that's awful. Data scientist. Okay, DB admin, tech manager. Okay, great, 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 great. A variety of crowd. Okay, 
Okay, let's 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 go to the to our to our agenda. Okay, so our agenda is, as you can see, is pretty big. Uh, we we'll first go over what is big data, what is Spark, what I can do with Spark, how can I build an application with Spark. I'm going to cover a little bit about Spark 3, which is just a recent addition, uh, and then we're going to install a bunch of software. So that, that that's uh, that's the first part. That's my goal in this uh, um, in the next minutes until we uh, we hit. Uh, uh, 345. Uh, so I have an hour to go there through that. And then we're going to, through, to go through examples. During the break between part one and part two, um, I will share well the list of software you would have to install uh, if you haven't. And you should be enough to, to do that. And then we can, we can go into part two with, with that. And part three, is going to do a bit of AI, okay? I think that's a, that's a fun part, uh, but uh, we need a little bit of background to go there. Um, okay. Uh, Docker containers, no. Uh, I, you'll see, David, that, that actually, uh, I think that Spark is easy enough that you don't need a Docker container. It's not like Hadoop where you would have to have all these machines, uh, all these virtual machines and this, the, but basically turning your, your laptop into a cluster of VMs with, with, with Spark, you don't have to do that. So, but let's, let's, let's dip into it. Let's dig into it and, and you'll see why. So big data. So really the thing about big data is uh, this is a kind of def the standard definition you will find. It's actually three Vs or four Vs or five Vs, okay? Uh, depending on who you're, who you're talking to, okay? So Wikipedia says three, IBM says five. Um, I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, it's about, it's anyway, it's about volume because it's big like big data. Uh, there's a variety because there's different sources, different file formats, different, um, it's, it, it's structured and unstructured. There's a velocity and the speed at which it grows. There's a variability because it's kind of, uh, you know, there's a source, it's gonna be depending on the source, acronyms and all this variability you can find in, in the data itself when you look at the data. And there's a value as well. I think, I think value is important because the thing is, you're not doing anything in a corporate world without thinking about the value you actually bring from it. But that's a kind of a, you know, the teacher professor definition. I like this one much better. I think that data is considered big when it needs more than one computer to be processed. Okay. So whatever computer you have, as long as you need more than one computer, that's big data. And, it, and this definition means that it can actually also apply to relational data based on a cluster, right? And that's big data already. But let's see what's, what, what, what is Spark and, and what Spark is a bit different. For me, Spark is an analytics operating system. And I owe this definition to this gentleman on the, on the left there on your screen uh, with the black, with dark suit, Rob Thomas, who's the SVP uh, at IBM of uh, Cloud and AI. And Rob, and, and also accessory, uh, the, the guy who wrote the foreword of my book. Um, but Rob is defining the Spark as, a, as an operating system. And that, that's something he shared with the audience at Water Watson in 2016. And I was already using Spark at that time. But I say, Rob, this is, this is crazy. Why, why, why an operating system? And I had to dig a little bit and so and to understand why it would be, why Spark would be an analytics operating system. So let's look at that. When you're building applications, you have your hardware, you've got your operating system, and on the top of your operating system, you have uh, your application, okay? Nothing new, uh, even if you're a sysadmin or, or a DBA, you know that. If you work in a distributed environment, remember, Big data, more than one computer, more than one computer equal distributed. So you've got your hardware layer, then you've got your operating system. And on top of that, you've got your application. But to do that, you will have to add a distribution layer, an analytics layer in your application, which as a result will make your application super fat, okay? By adding libraries and, and things like, oh, I need to understand when my, my host is down and things like that. That's impossible. We are application developers. We are not, or, or architects. We are not, we are not, uh, uh, we don't want to, 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 
to, to write another TCP IP layer, right? All right, it's almost at this level. So let's look at this thing. You've got your hardware operating system layer, and then you can add a distributed and analytics um, layer on top of your hardware so that basically you build your application and it stays thin on top of these layers. And this here is Apache Spark. <laughs> And it's an also an operating system because you can use many different languages to do it. You can ask Scala. You can use Scala, as I asked before. You can use Python. You can use R, or you can use Java. And I must admit that the most popular language for Apache Spark um, are definitely going, are going to be Java and Python. Uh, R is a bit on the way out, and, and Scala is very technical. So just let's look at a little bit of, 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 uh, of what we can do with, with, with uh, Spark. Uh, my, my first project was unfortunately is not, a, not accessible anymore, was called NC Eatery. And you could have some uh, restaurant analytics on, on uh, North Carolina restaurants. And I was actually analyzing quite a bit of data, as you can see, uh, 10 to the power of 21 data points analyzed. It was, it was, pretty, it was pretty, pretty intense. Now, Lumers, a, a customer of, of mine, I worked a few years before I joined IAP. Um, we, did, we did it for general compute and distributed data, data transfer and pipeline. CERN is, well, you probably heard of the CERN, or at least if you're using, uh, if you've watched as a Big Bang Theory anytime, you have heard of the Large Hadron Collider, and uh, they're not using it for directly the analysis of the LHC, but basically all the equipment that is, um, all the equipment that is uh, around the LHC, they collect data from it and they analyze the maintenance data with, 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 with that. And this, this is a really, really interesting top, topic. Uh, IBM has a, a tool called Watson Data Studio uh, and also tools like even stores and, and, and much more. I and, and and so you see the various things you can do. You can do, and that's why it's also it applies to um, to to be an operating system. It's really about understanding the various the various possibilities you have, as you know, doing general compute, ETL kind of work, analytics, all that with one framework and uh, one environment. So typically, uh, and, and uh, typically that's, that's how, how it works, okay? So you connect to a cluster and the cluster can be your single machine. Uh, and some of the demos I'm going to do with you guys uh, are just using my, my, my laptop here. And then I'm going to do, um, to load the data, do something with the data, and she has a result. That's that's typically what an application looks like, right? And and this is this is this process that we're going to study. And believe it or not, Spark, uh, as of June, is ten years old. And what what happened in in June is also the release of uh, Apache Spark version three. And it's a major evolution of of Spark. Uh, the community has worked on something like thirty four hundred new Jira tickets. And you can see here the very interesting part is Spark SQL, Spark Core, uh, where really where um, there was a lot of there was a lot of um, there was a lot of uh, work being done. So that SQL is uh, you can use more and more SQL. Uh, and you can and Spark Core is mainly about optimizing, and that's where a lot of work has been has been going there. Um, so there's also added a lot of static functions. So I, I know that don't you guys don't seem to have a lot of experience with Spark, but a lot of the work that is being done with, with Spark is is done through static function, and uh, they've added quite a few uh, uh, quite a few uh, uh, static function, and they're all listed there in, in this link I'm sharing, where you can you can just uh, look at look at the uh, at the Manning companion book, which is available for free with all the functions, with a description of the functions. So let's do it. Um, we can, we can, we can, we can start. Uh, and to do that, uh, 
we will uh, we will add special hardware, as I said, okay? So something really, really complex because otherwise it's not possible to process that much data. So to do that, you will have to use Clego, my Lego cluster. So I built this, uh, well, three, four years ago now. Uh, and you see uh, all four nodes uh, with this, uh, completely crazy architecture and if you look at the camera i can actually this is not this was not planned but here is clego uh so you have it you have it you have it live okay so now i need to put the camera back i'm not correctly uh and uh, it's it's a cluster four nodes in to, to process data okay but that's not true. you don't need such a computer i told you your laptop will be enough okay so um, you will you will need uh, go to jgp.net or jgp.ai slash ATO, and you will see the list of software you will need. Okay, um, so go there, get 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 started on the download. Uh, basically, what you will need is um, a JDK uh, one point eight or eleven. Uh, and you will need um, you will need Eclipse. Uh, I'm going to use Eclipse. If you've got IntelliJ or anything else, uh, feel free to use it. Uh, if you want, you can use Maven. Uh, most of uh, well, all the all the examples are are Palm, but they might not be. You might not be able to run them through, through Maven, depending on which labs we we want to execute. Uh, but that's that's basically it. Okay, so um, if if you look at the page, what is also interesting there is if when you go to jdp.net slash ATO, uh, you can install the software, you can access the source code, and you can run the first one. The if you run the first one, it will download all the all the information, all the all the content for the for the first uh, for the first. Um, uh, for, for the first um, example, which uh, is a lot, as you can imagine, Java, uh, and well, whether Java or not, but it's a rather complex system, but that's the only thing you've got to, to, to run, and it will take a little bit of time to, to download everything. So, um, so that's that's really my the end of my first session. Uh, I wanted to make sure that you have enough time to download everything. So when we go to the second session, you're you're ready to go. And uh, so in the meantime, uh, I'm going to stay here. And uh, I think the next session is scheduled in half an hour. Um, so if you've got any problem downloading the don't, yeah, VS Code, you can use VS Code. Uh, to 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 look to look at the code. Uh, if you if if you if you if you, well actually, mm, I'm pretty sure VS Code would work, but I have not tried it, and I don't know how it works with Java. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a I'm an Eclipse guy, old school a little bit. Uh, yeah, there's probably an extension for Java for sure, or at least. You know, Maven is so standard. IntelliJ works because IntelliJ will will read the the pom.xml, so you you can definitely use IntelliJ. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, Oxygen or later, but but Oxygen is 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 rather old now. Uh, you can you can you can you can use another one as well. Spring Tool Suite. Oh, I don't know Spring Tool Suite. Uh, knowing Spring, they probably work a lot with Eclipse. So basically, any tools that will be able to to open and read the pom.xml will will work, and that's that's how you do it with 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 uh, with Eclipse anyway. Okay, guys, you're good to go. More questions? I'm staying here anyway. And at 45, I'll just take a little break to get some water in, the, in there. So.
So Sankap, yeah, do you have any suggestion on resources to learn about Spark? Uh, you, you can have, yeah, you, you can create a new sport workspace or, or, or use the workspace you have. Well, so resource I would recommend for, uh, for learning Spark is definitely this, okay. Totally, totally, uh, um, totally okay. Yeah, um, uh, Jan Arlan, it's a 2018 link. Uh, I must admit that uh, I've been a bit lazy in updating the page, but it's uh, uh, it. I've updated regularly the content of the page, so you should be, you should be good to go. Uh, and we're going to cover that's really about the installation. So uh, yeah, VS Code Maven. I've got to try this one. Thank you, David. Uh, and so yeah, so yeah, this is really this is really shameful advertisement for my book, but uh, Sankalp asked. So is that available online as a free PDF? Come on, man. You know how much time I spend on that thing? Uh, yes, there's a discount, but uh, there's a discount. There's a nice discount for for uh, for for people uh, that want to uh, to to I, I actually put it on the last slide, but because you're asking and because you're nice guys, I'm going to I'm going to give you the discount right now. Uh, tuck, 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 where is the discount? There is 35 35% discount on anything Manning. Okay, so that's how generous Manning is. Um, yeah. Thanks, Kira. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. David, yeah, you love the background. What, what I'm doing is when I'm in between meetings, sometimes between, you know, like, you know, you, when you're, when you're, um, when you're a little bit bored between two minutes, uh, two meetings, and you don't have anything to do between two minutes, two meetings, you, I just go to the NASA website and I download pictures and they use them as background. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, we we Shri, we don't we don't need C C plus plus. It's just it's just uh, it's just Java, plain Java. Uh, we, we're going to use just plain Java. Let me go back to uh, get this stuff slide. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, you can install on a virtual box if you want. You can. It, it works on Windows. It's a little bit more tricky on Windows sometimes, but not not that much. Okay, so uh, nothing nothing violent here. So yeah, if 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 I go uh, to Eclipse, if I go to download, uh, you can you can get uh, Eclipse twenty twenty dash zero nine. Uh, I'm on a Mac here, but uh, oh, oh, David, you're already in big sore. I, I'm. I need to get work done, so I don't trust new betas. Uh, no, it's seriously. I'm, I'm still on Catalina. I don't. I don't need for it. I'm just waiting for the new for people to say it's okay. Okay. So yeah, so you can you can get that. Uh, I love the cookies. Okay, so if you go there, uh, this one this one is this one is is uh, is perfectly uh, usable. And then yeah, and then when you run that, it will ask you um, it will ask you what uh, where where you want to uh, when you run the run the installer, it asks you what you want. But if you can just a basic Java one is working. I, yeah, of course I use a resource. And actually, you know, so why are we there? Uh, this morning, you know, we did a kind of a, a fun session around the book in why I wrote the book and things like that. And I'm a Java guy, as I said, and, uh, and I think a lot of people are Java guys. And, uh, and I'm also a bit of a data engineer. Uh, so so I, I know SQL, I know Java. Um, 
And it was very difficult to actually find resources out there when I started learning about Spark. Of course, things are things are now completely different um, in uh, in the world. That was that was that was a few years ago. Uh, so you you find you find stuff, but I still haven't found really good resources for Java developers. Um, they're still pretty rare, and that's unfortunately a bit annoying. So any question? Everything is going okay. So when when you're when you're done um, when you're done, you can go to GitHub. Uh, that's where you're actually going to uh, to uh, to look for stuff, and you can go to uh, chapter one of GitHub uh, for the book. So it's uh, um, I can actually actually I can shares a URL in Zoom in the chat. Here. Hey, Kira, good luck. Uh, it's a passionate field, so I, I hope you will have a, you have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> um, so advanced auto parts is used to be in Roanoke and we are moving in uh, in rally um and the headquarters is officially in rally uh, i'm based in chapel Hill, and uh, we um uh we uh we may or may not use elastic search even i can't tell you but we still have a lot of uh, our uh colleagues in uh uh um we still have a lot of colleagues in um, in Roanoke, and we still have a, a, a very important staff over there. We don't we're not getting rid of the people there by any by any means. So, um, I've got great colleagues over there. I even got to go there before when uh, <laughs> when when traveling was was not a question of survival. Um, okay, and uh, as while we are talking about that, I can also go for the, show you the announcement we made with uh, Advents and um, and I'm monitoring. So if you've got any questions while you download, while you install the software, um, okay. Uh, yeah. So the news, the news track. Uh, so we did, uh, of course, when you're looking for something, you're not finding it, right? Uh, it's part of Murphy's Law, I guess. So here is our announcement, which you can read. So, uh, um, Advanced Auto Parts is um, uh, yes, on Carpia. Yeah, you can find me on uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, I I don't easily link on LinkedIn. I I only ask people who you know like you that went to a conference or uh, or ask nicely. <laughs> uh, no, but 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 yeah, please. I'm I'm available on LinkedIn as well. So basically, Advanced Auto Parts. Uh, is in the middle of this uh, digital transformation. So we use, uh, sometimes I use it to term that we are an old lady, uh, but this old lady is getting really a kick and uh, we decided to have an open source initiative. Um, and we announced our first uh, tool today, which is called Data in the Fast Lane. And Data in the Fast Lane is a Spark based ETL, which we which we open source uh, for the pleasure of all. So um so hopefully uh hopefully we'll uh, um we'll uh, we will find a, we will find a lot of uh, uh happy users of of that of that tool um we i will not speak about the tool today uh in this in this deck uh i i, I 
honestly did not have the time to to integrate it into the deck uh, because it's it's a really new tool for us to allow and uh, to get to get out and I didn't want to interfere with with the release of the tool so uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a more more you know more uh, logistical issue. Yeah, so yeah, data engineering is a cool way. I think I think uh, I think I was born a software engineer, and then I became a data engineer, and then now I'm I'm part of the of the evil side of things where um, with um, enterprise architects, I, I, but I'm working on it. Okay, I, I'm really working on it. So here's. Okay, so no one is having issues. It should be pretty straightforward. Uh, and uh, then when you're when you're started in uh, in Eclipse, uh, I can I can show you what my Eclipse looks like. So, oops. Okay, so let's make clips. Um, I'm really sorry about about the the left side here. I tried to change the font, and I managed to change the font for some things, but not everything. Uh, so it's a little bit it's a little bit annoying. I but I've got a bigger font for for the code when I'm when I'm running the code. Um, Okay. Um, so you have you have your project there, uh, and that's how it should appear when when you're when you're ready. Uh, in Eclipse, if you if you're not familiar with Eclipse, you've got uh, you've got a different perspective. Uh, so you look at the perspective, open the perspective, um, and when you open perspective here you go to git okay and you can open it and in the git here you can um a quick trick is if you if you copy the code here you just copy it here you copy the link to uh, to clone and then here you just paste it uh, it comes all pre-filled and you just go next, 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 and it's, and it's there. So, okay. So I don't see any, any questions and it's 43. So I will let you finish installation uh, and we will connect back in uh, in roughly 15 minutes and uh, I hope you're all going to stay and uh, we're going to go with uh, really live uh, stuff and really some more more interesting stuff uh, uh, together there and uh, so in the second part of this talk which is really about ingesting data and basic analytics okay i'm back did you guys have any issues everything's running did you all leave <laughs> thanks charles okay great kira Awful, awesome, Chindabaram. I'm sorry if I pronounce badly your name. You know, my first name is Jean Georges, and nobody gets it really. So, 
not an excuse for breaking people's other people's name. Okay, so it's four. Uh, we can we can get started, continue on this journey. Okay, so. So first, I, I, I needed an explanation to you on on why we're using uh, on why we're using Java, right? I think I think it's it's important that you know why. It's because it's much safer, especially in those times of pandemic. I think it's much better that we use Java. Having said that, our first lab is going to be about ingestion, so nothing to do with digestion, and uh, we are going to ingest data. And that's the first part of uh, usually of a big data project where you ingest data, you take the data and you put it in the process, okay, in the in in the in Spark. Um, this is a link uh, which you hopefully have downloaded things from, and so basically you can um, you can you can go to. Uh, net.jgp.books.spark, uh, that's uh, chapter one, you locate CSV.2 data frame app, and uh, we you right click on the Java uh, app, and that's for Eclipse, and you go run as and Java application, okay? And if everything works the way it should, you see something similar to that, okay? Did anyone? Try it. Did it work? I'm going to to, to try it live with you guys. Um, so, see if I'm not getting too old uh, for that kind of exercise. Okay, my first, my first, and I'm sorry, that's too, really too small. I, I know. If here, here, here's the code, um, and I can actually run it. So, run as Java application, and. Uh, if I up oh, my console is is opening is open so yeah yeah I've got the, I'm running Java 11 so you've got this kind of a little bit of a warning here and then pam pam my data okay so I didn't lie uh, yeah yeah Samantha you get you, you get the warnings there it's probably linked to to the security models that change in Java 11 but uh, but we're we're going to live with it okay uh, for now when I'm doing a shell script I'm redirecting to to slash dev slash no yeah it would be nicer but that's how i do it okay so let's look at the code um let's look at the code because we are uh code looker code lookers okay so when i do examples i like to have my imports especially in java so you know what i'm going to import so uh, basically here in this this is a very complex example um i'm going to import three stuff which is a data set a row and a session okay it looks like since the invention of the session, uh, everybody has a session. So there's a Spark session that 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 works as well. Um, so main it starts uh, creates an instance of the of of the of the main um, of the uh, of the application, and uh, I'm running it through the start method. And then you can see here a Spark session. Uh, I'm creating my Spark session with the boulder. And the builder, um, the builder, um, I'm going to set a name. That's a name. That's a random name. You can you can set anything. The master, um, because you can you can specify a different uh, here local. It it will assume and it will create instantly a cluster on my machine. Uh, and that's a big big benefit compared to, for example, Hadoop. You see, you didn't. When you when you run it, you did not install anything, right? You you just add your palm, basically Maven downloaded some of the stuff it needed, but puff, it just starts, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to get or create a session. That's 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 a work there. Um, and finally, oh, well, not finally, but uh, and then I'm opening my CSV file, and uh, so I can do um, option. Specify some options of reading my CSV file, which is the header. Yes, my my file has a header. Um, and if you look at the if you look back at the code, you see the header here. We see ID, offer, title, release date, etc. That's my header. And my and then the second option is load, and that's a, the the path to the to the file. And the, and the rest of the thing is it just shows that it just shows the data. 
So here it's a small file, but if it was a, a bazillion records or a bazillion rows and a bazillion columns, uh, it would just do the same thing at roughly the same speed. Okay, so um, that's that's so now you know how to ingest a CSV file in Apache Spark. So let's look let's look a little bit at under the hood and try to understand what's what what was going on. Okay, before before we go further. So we are uh, looking at um, uh, at this, this is a stack, this is a usual stack. So if you go to uh, um, uh, spark.apache.org, this is a stack you will see with Spark SQL, Spark Streaming, MLI for machine learning and graphics. I, I, I'm not a great fan of, of this uh, of this stack because I think it, it, it misrepresent some of the things. So I, I like to turn it to this one where you see the, the nodes, the physical nodes, okay, uh, at the very bottom. And then you see my operating system nodes, uh, which are, well, of course, the uh, operating system layer. Sorry, and then on the top you you have you you have Spark on its unified API. Okay, so we we are storing things uh, in a container called a data frame, and this container has a unified API. Which, if you learn this API, that's the only thing you will need to learn going further in Spark. Um, and you can use SQL, uh, as in Spark SQL. You can use streaming. Um, we won't do streaming today, but it's a really fun thing to do, actually. Um, you've got uh, machine learning on, on AI with uh, Spark MLlib and um, graph database and graph processing with, with, with Spark graphics. And then, as I said before, your application is lower, is leveraging all this, all this stack uh, on top of that, um, which, which I like also to extend with the data frame. So the data frame is a very interesting concept. Uh, if you've done some Python uh, with, with pandas, uh, you're kind of familiarized already with, with what the data frame is. For me, the data frame is really this boost, this data container and API. And so when you learn the API, this unified API, you will learn how to manipulate and, and use the data frame. And that's really uh, the very powerful thing you, you'll, you'll be able to to, to, to leverage in your in your uh, in your application. So really, as a developer, and to make a developer happy, you give it a data frame. One thing is got to learn. I'm a developer, or well, a dark at least, uh, and I'm a bit lazy. So if I've got only to learn only about one API, I'm really about it, and and the data frame API is, is better. And then based on that, you can do SQL streaming, MLlib, and graphics. Okay, so one thing. Isn't that neat? Um, and so let's let's deep a little let go deep a little bit more into a more complex example. So um, just a bit, okay. Um, so let's let's look at our at our example. So my goal is to I have two data sets and. Um, so, if if you guys are looking at the working with the with the with the with the book at the, with the example at the same time, which I highly recommend, you can jump to chapter fifteen, okay, this chapter fifteen, and um, and you can look at lab nine hundred and twenty, uh, and and of course you will have to to get that from GitHub, okay. So it's a, it's a you probably got a, you probably got. Um, and I'm going to copy that. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry. Um, you can, you can. I'm going to co to copy that to, to you guys uh, in uh, in the chat. Uh, so that's this uh, chapter 15. Okay. So chapter 15, and it is in the chat. Okay. Um. And you will you will get this project, and we will see what this project is all about. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, my keynote just crashed on me like violently. Oh no, it's here. Okay, so we are going to use two. Um, two files, two CSV files, you just ingested one, so you know how to do that now. And one is containing books and the other one is containing offers, okay? And what I want to do is to list the, the, to get the list of offers with the most books, by number of books. So if it was a relational database, 
and you're probably used to uh, manipulating or uh, dealing with relational databases, RDBMSs, you would have an offer table and a books uh, table, and you can actually link uh, on the um, Oops, on the ID. Um, yeah, I wonder why. Okay, on the ID, and you can uh, link to the offer ID in books at CSV. Okay, nothing, just a basic join, left join, and you can do that. So, if we look at that, uh, that's the uh, that's the that's a lab we are running to going to run, uh, and you can look if you go to uh, net.jgp.books.spark.chapter15. Uh, dot lab 920 uh, count books per offer and open offers and books count uh, books at the Java. The guy who wrote this was really not inspired. My God. Okay, uh, you uh, right click run as as a Java app, and if you are successful in your application, you should be seeing something like that. It was kind of a ta -da. Okay, let me run it as well on my side, and then we can do it. We can analyze what's going on and what we did. So, chapter 15. You get 25, Samantha, you get 25 records. That's pretty good. Okay, uh, let me just do a 920. I don't know if you should be getting 21 records. Let's let's look at that. Okay, okay. I'm going to open it. I don't have to open it to run it, but I'm, and then I'm going to run it. So, if you had to do that with with a relational database, which is not difficult, right? It's a couple of uh, uh, group by and count. Uh, you first would have to ingest the CSV files in the database. Okay, so that was your first step. And then you would have to be able to do the SQL statement, and um, so so that's that's what I've done. Okay, so uh, well, this this bad example doesn't even tell you how much records you have. Let's see, um, so and I think you probably have only those. I don't think you have 21. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 records. Yep. So with that, yep, 15 records. Okay. And I will I will show you how to not be the lazy way of, of dealing with what I just did, like counting things like on the screen. That's pretty lame. Okay. So uh let's start, let's look, look let's look at the code and see what happens. Okay. So, as you can see, I have exactly the same imports here. Okay, so nothing new I'm going to add to my thing. Uh, so data set row uh, and Spark session. Okay, and now what, what do we have? I'm starting uh, and I'm building my session. I give it a name, offers and books. I'm setting a master local. Okay, so Spark will create a cluster on the fly here and get the session. Then. I'm going, as we did just before, I'm going to import the data from offers and books. And the same thing. It's a CSV. It has a header. And I'm also I, adding a little thing here called infer schema. Okay, I don't need it, actually. Uh, I don't think I need it, actually. It would be interesting, but I don't think I need it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to show you the, the, the CSV files. That's a great question. Uh, thanks so much for asking it. Um, and uh, so I'm going to infer schema. So basically, I'm going to tell Spark, hey, look at what kind of data it is and tell me if you can do something with it. And then the magic happens. OK, I'm doing the same thing for books. And before the magic, it's a good, it's a perfect good timing to look at the data, actually. So if I look at the data, books. Uh, offers. Ugh, that's ugly, small. Sorry, guys. Uh, ooh, this is awful. It's a bit, it's a bit better here, but it's not that great. Huh? Um, let me see if I can do better. Open with. Mm -mm -mm. 
Okay, maybe it's a little bit better. Okay, so I imported it in a CSV file, a CSV file in numbers, and I can actually do bigger than here. Okay, so that's the offers. You see um, the ID, fifteen. So assuming that 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 refers as a, probably a link with your fifteen you got, um, and the link and the Wikipedia. Okay, um, if I look at the book. I will probably have a very similar uh, display. Tuk, 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 tuk. Uh, open with uh, a system editor. Okay, and if I zoom in, see very similar thing. I've got my ID of the book, my offer ID, my title, the release date, which is all over the place, uh, on the link. And you see here that uh, numbers uh, is completely lost about CSV files uh, because yeah, Java 18 actions <laughs> completely lost. Uh, discourse on the method, uh, no, Fable Choisy de la Fontaine completely lost. Okay, so so when you look at what Spark is doing here, is doing a much better job as at importing the CSV file. Okay, let's get a, let's get out of here, um, and. Um, and we, we can go back to the source code. Does that answer your question, Samantha? OK. Um, OK, uh, so so next step is I've got my two data frames. Ooh, that's a term I use, OK, the data frame. So the, you see the, the, the definition of a data frame here is this data set of row here, data set row. I've got my data set up there, row here. Data set row. Okay, that's my data frame. That's that's the type um, used in 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 Spark uh, in Java. Data set of row. You can have data set of other things, uh, but uh, the row is the most powerful container uh, in Spark. And specifically, the data set of row is a data frame. A data set of something else is not a data frame. Um, I hope it's not too confusing here. Um, and so. The next thing is, uh, like you would do, is do a join, right? So this is my join. I could do it in SQL if I wanted to, but um, I'm better at Java than SQL. So I did it using the APIs. So what am I doing here? I'm actually looking at, I'm building my library, okay? My my new data set, my new data frame here called library DF. I use, I take it from offer, uh, from the offer data frame, and I'm joining it with books. And I'm going to join it on, on ID. So basically, offers.id equals books.offerid. It's not faster to, to do it in, in SQL. Uh, oh, you only see the spreadsheet done? Are you the only one seeing the spreadsheet? Because I, I've got my iPad here that is displaying what you should be. Yeah, join your C code. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe John, you you can reconnect. Okay, done. Okay, you're good. Good. Um, sorry about that. Sometimes it's a uh, it's a bit tricky, or maybe it's just a bit of a delay. Um, yeah. So I I could do in SQL. SQL is not faster, uh, and and under um. Uh, under underneath, it's it's going to be optimized anyway. Uh, so you could it's where your level of comfort. To be honest, I could I could do uh, I could do SQL or I could do uh, I could do a join there. I, I kind of like the, the Java Java API. Um, so uh, so what what I, what else I'm going to do after that is I'm going. You see this book ID. Okay, so I'm I'm going to call to create a new column called book ID, and it's going to to take as a base of this book ID. I'm going to take ID there, because yeah, it's confusing, right? And then I'm going to drop the the columns books books ID, and then I'm going to do a group by, exactly how you would do a group by, um, in SQL, and I'm going to then count. That's it. That's it. And then after I'm ordering, and then I'm showing. So, if you're if you're a Java developer, you know that this this uh, method chaining is 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 pretty common. Um, 
at some point you cannot change everything because it needs to know about the data before you can do it. So that's why I could do the, the method of chaining for all that. And this this is a bit confusing for Spark if I would just do all the thing. It doesn't know what's a contain, what, what is the library DF contains if I would do just adding that there, okay? And so I do a show as I showed you before. And I also did a print schema. So what is a print schema? It shows a schema of my data frame, of my resulting data frame. So if I go back, you see it here. Right, you see it, you see my, you see at the bottom, you see my schema. So I've got logically, it, it matches the columns I've got in my data frame. So I've got a column ID, which is an integer. I've got a name, okay, um, and it's a string. I've got a link, which is a string, and I've got a count, which is long. And if you look at that, the very interesting thing is that I've never at any place specified which data or data type I was using. Spark inferred all that by himself. Pretty nice, huh? Okay. So let, let's 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 drill a little bit more into into that um, and uh, and to to understand what's 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 going on there. And the I would say the art of delegating. Remember, we're even if I'm running it everything locally, um, I I'm, I'm running a distributed system, okay? So that's how it works. And um, you, the, the, way, the, way, the way you do it is you've got your application, okay? So if I look at the application I just ran, okay, so, um, so if, I, if I just show you the application I just ran, okay. This application is my driver. That's 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 a definition. That's a definition for 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 Apache Spark. It connects to a cluster. When I say when I create a session and specifying local, that's what it go. That, that's what is happening. It goes and create. Well, in this scenario, it creates it, but it could specify another master, another cluster manager, that that will take it over. So that's that's how you set master. And then that's it. For, for for it then because that's really the driver kind of driving the, the cluster manager and the resource with all the resources and that's where the master is going to talk to his to the nodes to the workers or slave depending on the literature um and uh, so the master is, is talking to the workers in the workers themselves have executors and they run tasks. So the role of the cluster manager is to take what you're doing and splitting it into tasks and giving it to the workers. Okay, that's as basic as that. And for doing that, there is this um, uh, operation, this this um, this this data that is kind of being cut in, in, in pieces, uh, well, not only the data, the operation as well, through something called a DAG, which, uh, which is analyzed and optimized. So Spark is listing all what is going, what it has to be doing in terms of transformation. And at the end, it's going to do an action, which is the, the result operation. When it goes through all this transformation, it creates, it does not do anything, right? Let's, let's go back to the code. And, and, and here you see that it's it's doing all these things, okay? It's doing this, this join. First, it's loading the data. Then it's doing this join. Then it's going to do the, the column renaming. Then it's going to drop. And then it's going to do some group by. And then it's going to do some, some count. And then it's going to do an order by. But basically, it's not doing anything of that. It's just creating a list of tasks, a list of operations, a list of transformation. And those transformation, when given to the cluster manager, they are, they are, they are creating all these tasks. And these tasks are actually doing all the work. You know, it's always the same thing. Instead of master, we could call it boss and workers if you want. But basically, the boss is giving the work to all the people at the work, and and the workers are actually doing the, the real work. They have the tasks, and when that's done, uh, the data is brought back to the driver. 
So that's so that's why you, you see the arrow coming back from the uh, the workers back to the driver. So it's an important it's an important concept when you're doing uh, security analysis because you you cannot say, hey, I've got my driver running on my machine, but my cluster is in the cloud. Okay, uh, that would <laughs> that would uh, that that would not be that would not work because then how do you get the data back to your laptop? Okay. So that's that's kind of a rookie mistake, which I did several times at the beginning, uh, and uh, I had a I had I had my experience with that. Okay, um, we're a bit early, uh, and I wanted to start uh, the uh, part, part three at, at forty five, but I think we could we can start part three unless you've got well first let's have a if you've got any questions there and then we we can we can we can go on part three after right away. And, and look at a bit at, uh, at AI with Spark. You guys have any questions? Are you all asleep? Okay, looks like uh, you're not asleep because nobody answered, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Let's 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 start let's start section three of that uh, part three of this of this. I can. Uh, I've I've lost my cursor. Sorry, guys. Okay. Part part three AI. Mm, I'm trying to get a sense of having my cursor on my screen, which I, I really need sometimes. So sorry, guys. Okay. I've got to check why it's doing that with, um, okay, with um, Keynote. Okay. AI. So we're not going to do a lot of AI. Okay. So, so uh, that would be, that would be Pretty presumptuous of myself, and uh, I think we, we should first start about what uh, about what is AI and have a look at uh, at what is what is this, what is AI. So, yeah, this slide didn't render <laughs> as expected, but on the left column you've got the popular belief and kind of the current state of the art. Uh, the popular belief is robots. It's Hal from two thousand one. It's Isaac Asimov with its, uh, you know, the three or, or four, depending on you count, uh, loads of robotics, um, and, uh, and 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 in general AI, the potential AI uh, as potential ethic problems. Okay, like, uh, uh, oh, can I kill this human because it's ruining the planet he's living on? Which reminds of let's go back to the laws from uh, Asimov. Uh, first law: a robot may not injure a human being, or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Okay, so that's we're safe as long as we are implementing Asimov's laws of robotics into robots, which I've never seen implemented. But let's hope that for the future generations they do it. And of course, well, of course, that's a science, a bit of a science fiction thing. And where we are now, AI is a lot of mass. It's heavy calculation. Um, it's a lot of algorithms, which are pretty complex. And it, but it also is self-driving cars, and that's and and other fun stuff. But but we that's kind of what we call narrow AI. Um, it's it's kind of focusing on a specific field of where. Uh, um where we are right now okay and, and and really i think that if you you need to keep that in mind while you're all uh um you you, uh, you are all kind of aware of that anyway i think you're probably not not dreaming about uh um monsters going robots monster going to kill you in your sleep but um but anyway so it's really a lot of that and there's a lot of marketing be behind ai so really i think that AI in 2020 is really more or less like you know machine learning because just a little bit more, but not not that much. And if you find someone saying you that, hey, I'm an expert in general AI, is probably a liar. So be aware of that. Uh, or a science fiction writer, which is some sort of liar. Okay, so 
And look, we, when we look at machine learning at, at, a, at a vast field, um, there is uh, some common, common algorithm, which you probably have heard of, like uh, linear logistic regression. You've got classification and regression trees. And you've got things like uh, the nearest neighbor. Okay, and I like the nearest neighbor. It's this kind of yellow little guy. Say, hey, am I blue or am I orange? Okay, and you've got a subset of um, subset of this, which is um, this uh, uh, deep learning, uh, and this is things like. Uh, artificial neural networks, and you've got a small illustration next to it, or you've got also um, uh, things like reinforcement learning and uh, advertiser, uh, advertiser, advertisers and things like that, which which are, are getting a little bit closer to how the, the human brain is functioning. Um, but uh, but basically, it's it's all math. Okay, it's all got algorithm, and, uh, and that's really where the, the data scientist is kind of thrilling. And uh, speaking of data scientists, are you yourself more like a data scientist or a data engineer? And can you answer this simple question? So let's focus a little bit about what a data engineer and what a data scientist is. The data engineer is making sure that the data is correctly delivered, maintained, um, deployed, and for people to be able to consume it. His goal is to uh, be good at data modeling um, in creating pipelines, and uh, we're going to, to, to look at that. And his goal is also to improve data reliability and quality. Data reliability I'm accessing the data. It needs to be. It needs to be the tools I'm going to use for accessing the data needs to be reliable. Quality. There's a lot of different things about quality, and you can you can look uh, you can Google for Cactar, and you'll see uh, a little bit of a uh, data quality. So Cactar, C A C T A R, and and that's really a very important field of of data engineering. You want data of quality. On the, other, on the other end, the data scientist is more like a, you know, I, I like to, uh, I like to call a bit the data scientist like the, the guy who's whispering at the at the ear of the data. Um, he, he's there, he or she's there to clean, to massage, to organize the data. Um, is doing is doing statistics. Okay, um, is looking at analytics. Is building insight and models. Uh, we talk more about models just in a bit, which are really this this uh, uh, interpretation and this application of, of uh, AI, and it creating yeah it prepares the data for predictive models. There's a whole preparation for that, which is not really in the field of data engineers, uh, and really it's about fighting hidden gems in the data and patterns okay so i've got my data what is it meaningful and and that's where you you will need the data scientist you won't need a data scientist to do the to do the data engineer and that's a common mistake is that a lot of people are hiring data scientists but they forget to hire data engineers and basically the data scientist is in the data engineering world and i i know and respect a lot of data scientists they don't know how to do the data engineering work. And I, low, low, I know a lot of data engineers and they really don't know a single thing about what data science is. Um, so really be clear, be really mindful of that. And finally, I think the data, the data scientist is really about telling stories. It, it's a storyteller, okay? When you, when you find something, you've got to explain it. I, I, and, and a lot of nerds in, Data as data engineers are not capable of being able to be uh, 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 storytellers. And it's all fine. It's not a criticism of them. They are really brilliant at what they're doing. You've got these two roles. Okay, keep them in mind. And now think about the tools they're using. Of course, the tools are different. The data engineer is using databases, relational databases, things like Elasticsearch, Redis. Um, database locally on the cloud. It can use things like Spring Boot. It can use S3. Uh, it can use GitHub. 
this is this is this is a tool that, that the data engineer is using. Okay. Uh, and on the other hand, the data scientist is using tools like IBM like Watson Studio, is using uh, uh, Databricks. Databricks is one of the company behind uh, um, behind uh, Spark. Uh, SAS, local to Cary, North Carolina. Uh, Tableau, SPSS, R, Jupyter, and Zeppelin, whatever. Okay, this kind of analytics oriented tools. Uh, Jupyter and Zeppelin are kind of my really favorite tools of the moment for data scientists. But you can see also that in the data scientist, I also added PowerPoint and Excel. And actually the, the kind of the old icons of PowerPoint and Excel. I think they're people more, they relate more to people now. Um, because it's storytellers, okay? And to tell stories, you need PowerPoint. Like, well, I'm using Keynote to tell you a story today. Uh, or Excel to show figures in on in important data in, in a palatable way. And of course, there's this middle part, this 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 intersection of my Venn diagram. And in the middle, you will see what Apache Spark. Okay, so, so really a common tool between the data engineer and the data scientist is really Spark. And you will find some languages that you know you can use on top of that, which are Java, Scala, Python, SQL, right? So yeah, I would say that most data scientists don't use Java, but I, I, I'd like to give them some exposure to Java. But anyway, yeah, they use a lot more Python and, and data engineers use more Java, but you know, the common ground could be SQL as well. So there's something in the middle there. So, so that's, that's, that's a very important thing. And of course, of course, a key element of that is data quality. Because if you don't have the quality data in your system before you start machine learning, then you're completely, completely, completely off, okay? So if you've got garbage in, you've got garbage out at an exponential rate. So I set the grounds for that. Let's look at my third example, which is correcting and extrapolating data. So here is, um, here is my uh, my third lab, okay? So I'm a restaurant manager and I want to predict how much revenue will bring a party of 40. I, and uh, I, can, I can actually copy the link to you. Oops, it's, uh, so this is going to be a very basic example of, uh, duck, duck. Here is the link, 99. Um, and we're going to we're going to look at that. So of course this is oops, sorry, what happened here? I lost my keynote here. Of course, this is this example is kind of pre-COVID, okay, when you could go to a restaurant with more than uh, two people. Um, and uh, and uh, we will look at the data and, and see and, and look at the quality of the data. In the meanwhile, in the chat, you can tell me if you want, we're supposed to have a break in five minutes. We could also skip the break, continue and finish a little early or have the break. So just tell me in the chat, what, what's your take on that? Okay. So, uh, okay. So let's, so, I, I took the data of the examples and you can see the examples of the data and I plotted them on the graph, okay? And you can see that if I would give this data as it is to an AI system, well, it would predict that my data, um, you, can see the, you can see my red line here, which is going to be uh, to predict that for 40, we're not going to have a lot of revenue. And visually, you can see that there's something odd, right? And so you see that there's two anomalies here. One anomaly is, well, someone is paying way too much for the number of guests I have. 
versus the uh, versus the, the the price they're paying. Okay, maybe they're just having a great party with champagne and stuff. And we've got an anomaly number two where people are huge parties like 25, 27, and they're paying nada. Uh, so there's something wrong. But when I remove these anomalies from my data, it works. Okay. So when I run my application, you can see that I load my data, I apply the, the data quality rules, and then I can run my predictive analytics model and see how much I'm going to make for, for the guests. So let's look at code. And uh, you can, you can, you can, we can run it together. Uh, so it's chapter 99, this one here. Okay, and it is, in this repo, you'll find some kind of a fun things I did with, uh, with uh, not fun data, which is a COVID-19 data. Um, so you can also have a little bit of a fun understanding it. Uh, and I've covered that in a few videos. Okay, so would we say it's lab 200 of data quality? You see, it's too small. I told you it's too small. Okay. This is this one. Okay, and then I can run it, run as job application. So Spark is starting a session, loading the data. Still, 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 still see the warning. And um, it's loading the data, displaying a lot of things. And at the end, poof, you see it. Prediction for 40 guests is 218. Um, it's a cheap restaurant. Um, and if you look at the data itself, if I look at the data and my data directory there, doop, 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 doop. Uh, took, took, took. Restaurant. And I look at six. See, the data is really okay. It's a, it's a basic thing. Number of guests, uh, not even a column there. Number of guests, uh, total amount. Okay. So let's let's uh, let's let's look at uh, let's look at what happens. Okay. First step. I'm going to filter the data, to, to the bad data. To filter the bad data, um, there's no function in Spark saying, hey, get rid of the bad data, right? You've got, I've got to tell it, to, to tell Spark how to do that. And it's a specific thing. So it's a specific application. So for that thing, I'm going to use um, user-defined functions. So the user-defined function is a function I add to Spark. So, and you can see it here. Uh, I'm going to, it's implemented as a class. Uh, oops, sorry. It's implemented as a class and you've got to have this, this call. Okay, so that's basically, I'm telling Spark, hey, this is my new function, um, do, do that, okay? And that's, that's the way I implemented it is just to do the plumbing with a library I have. Often you have your data quality rules somewhere else, already implemented somewhere. Because, because we're using Java, well, then basically the easy way is to tell it, hey, use that as a source, use that as a library, and uh, implement the thing. So this library here, the goal of it is to check the price. And if there's a price that is less than 20 bucks, uh, there's a problem, okay? We don't charge people less than 20 bucks. And what is going to do this this method very basic here is going to check the minimum price and if the check if the price is under the minimum price it's going to return minus one and we'll see why and it's because there's no way to delete the, to delete the row to delete the record there okay so that's 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 my code that's that's my, that's my functional library okay here that's my that's my library that's my uh, that's my um a service and that that's kind of the, just a plumbing this part is just a plumbing i will have to tell spark a hey, spark this is this new functions that you've got to learn about now uh now what i'm doing is i'm asking spark to 
So a very similar thing. Okay, I've got a little bit more imports. You would have to find them out. Uh, same thing, I'm starting the, the application, giving a name, giving a session. And then I've got these two things here, okay? I've got this, this UDF. So basically I'm telling Spark, hey, register these two functions. Uh, they are called minimum price rule and they are implemented in a class called minimum price data quality UDF. And the second one is price correlation rule and it's, it's implemented in a price correlation data called UDF, okay? Pretty, pretty straightforward, nothing, nothing rocket science here. And I'm just asking them to register them. As you see, I'm registering an instance of it. Okay, so that's very useful because if I'm registering an instance, it won't have to create instance every time it's going to use it. It's going to use only one instance. Next step is loading the data. We've done it. We've we've done that so many times so far. Okay, um, so same thing. It's uh, we are going to have a CSV. Uh, we are going to infuse a schema. Uh, in this one, there's no there's no header. Okay, uh, and that's why I'm actually you see this this code here uh, where I'm I'm creating the, the a column called gas and a column called price. Uh, by default, Spark will will create a column called underscore C zero underscore C one, which is really a bit burk. So I'm asking Spark to just do it for me in a nicer way. But also, I mean, the data could come from you know JSON, uh, Hive, JDBC, you name it. And, and that's a result, okay? Loads of, loads of data, you, you, you see the data. Of course, when you visualize your data like that, it's very difficult to, to see what's, if there's something a little bit wrong there or not, okay? So, uh, so okay, well, this is the data. This is how it looks. Uh, it contains the anomalies. After my next put, my next, my next thing is, let's apply my price domain rule, okay? My, my minimum price rule on the, on the column price. And remember, this one is, if you see something that is wrong, it's going to replace the value by minus one. So let's look at the result. Uh, so it says here, oh, for 25 guests, you've got something like a, a price of $3. So you see that the column that is being created by, by Spark is a, is a column called price no min here. So I keep the column I have, okay? I, I keep the price column it sees three, 10, 15, four, et cetera, et cetera. But it replaces a value by, by minus one, okay? So that's, that's my real usable value after that. And so, and then what I'm doing is I'm, and here, here you can see how to use uh, SQL directly. So what am I doing? The, the data in Spark is immutable. Okay, so this this is this works a little bit better when when we are more interactive in in a session. But what does it mean to have immutable data? Immutable data is data you can't change, right? You cannot change you cannot change data. It's immutable. So the first time I ran into that while learning Spark, I said, "This is completely nuts, man." I mean, you you are talking about a data processing system that does not change data. So there's a reason why, and it's actually true. It does not change the data. And there's there's a lot of explanation and I'm just going to be, uh, you know, it's getting a bit late and everybody wants to go back home and have a bourbon. But but the thing is, there's a big, there's an explanation in, in, in this book about why the data is immutable and why it should be immutable. But we've got to, I don't want to work with the data where with minus one as a total, okay? So that's what I'm doing. I'm creating a view, I'm creating a SQL, like a table, and I'm going to apply the select statement. And the select statement, I'm going to select, you can read with me, the number of guests, the price nomen, the column price nomen you see just before, but I'm going to rename this as price. And I'm going to eject the thing, so, the, the price where where is where's a negative value, okay? Where there's a negative value, I don't want the, the thing. So I'm creating a new data frame. It's not the it's not like I'm dropping records or deleting rows in a in a, in, a, in a table. I'm creating a new data frame. Okay, seems odd, but that's the way it works, and that's the way it works fast. So I hope you got it. 
that's that's the way that's the way I do it. Okay, so now I've got my new data frame, and you see SQL, pure SQL here. Nothing, nothing like a crazy Java APIs. That's a result. I've got my number of guests. You see, there's no minus ones here. So there's no odd values. This is my usable data. This is the data I can use to do some do something interesting, like building a predictive model. So, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first to format the data for machine learning. So there's a few rules. Okay, so um, Spark expect me to call uh, a column called label and another call called features. The label is of type double, uh, like a double, like a you know a fruit, but a double. And the features is a vector, and that's a UDT. So I'm going to I'm I'm going to um, I'm going I'm going to do that, and show you how to do that, to prepare the data for machine learning. And that's it. So my label is basically the price. So what I'm just doing is I'm creating a new column called label, which is a clone of price. That's the first line. Okay, nothing else. And then I'm creating I'm creating my feature column. So it's features because I can have more than one features. In this scenario, I only have one feature, but I could have features. We could something we could have the temperature of you know the restaurant to see if they consume more alcohol or drink more uh, uh, if the if it's if the weather is hot, is hotter or warmer uh, same thing you can add other other features here we're just going to have one and uh, it's it expects an array of columns of, of, of columns and that's that's just how I did it okay I'm just creating an array of columns and that's guessed the number of guests and that's that's my column and it it needs to be named features that's how uh mlib will will understand it and then i'm just assembling it and then i'm printing the schema well i don't need to print the schema and i'm i'm, I'm showing uh and then you've got this very complex modeling here because it's so complex and because it's so advanced in, a, in our day, I'm not going to show it to you. I'm not sure you deserve to see it. So let's, and then I'm going to predict it based on my model, my, my secret source models here. And basically what I'm doing is just printing out. Okay, so what's the result of that? The result is that you see my column, my first column guest, the number of guests, the price they paid, the corrected price, and then you see the, what what is it, what what Spark is expecting. So you see my features, okay, and you see my prediction for this feature. So you see, it's the, the prediction should be the closest possible to the price they paid. Otherwise, I'm um, otherwise I'm 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 getting wrong. Okay, so so when you look at uh, there's a bit of offset there, for example, for two this there's, there's 30 and 33 so it predicts 29 not too bad for 16s it should be 102 and it's one 100 pretty pretty close for 20 it's 120 and it predicts 120 so we, we're, we're pretty good there okay and for uh the prediction of for 40 it's 218 so what, what we were expecting so that's a good that's that's a code for making my prediction for 40 guests. Now I want to see, yes, that you want to see the model in the chat. Do you want to see how I built the model? Okay. Okay, I want more than one. Okay, 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 okay. Not 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 that much. Okay. Oh, you don't have to beg. Um, okay. So here is the code. Oh, okay. Here, here is here is the code. See, that's that's it. That's that's a code. First thing is I'm creating a linear regression. That's that's a type of algorithm I'm going to use, and I can set some parameters, uh, which could be called also hyperparameters in the literature, and I'm going to use uh, this max either reg param and elastic net param. Okay, let's let's forget about all those. But the thing is, I'm creating a linear regression. Just linear regression, LR equal new linear regression. Then I'm giving my data to it. 
okay I'm, I'm giving my data to the to the trainer so and that's how it, it, do, it does it does it does the work okay so you see a linear regression model my model I'm fitting the data here this this is building my model from my data so this is where you see that creating the model is a direct correlation of my data. My data is shit. My model is worse than shit. And then, um, and then I can start looking at the prediction thing. So that's uh, I'm creating. That's that's how that's how I'm predicting. Okay. So I'm creating a feature of forty, my number of guests I want to analyze, and as a feature, uh, uh, I'm creating a vector out of it. Once more, it's using vectors, okay? Uh, yeah, and, and it's it's all included, okay? So I didn't add anything. You can add more people, because, but but it's it's really the same. It's always the same the same thing, the same idea. Um, and then I can predict based on my model model that predict and my, my features. If for some reason I'm not happy with my linear regression and I want to have another type of model, I can. I can I can create something else. I can create a logistic regression. It would not be used for that thing, but for that model, for that for that use case. But I, I just create that, and my code does not change after. Okay, my my model is the same. So that's why it, what is really important is to understand, um, to understand. So it's it's really all about the model. It's when you're doing AI, that's that's how you're doing it. You've got your first data set. You go through a trainer, the fit method we just saw, and you get a model. Then your precious model, you keep it, and you can have more data to it. Okay, so you've got your second data set, and you can do the model, and you've got your predicted data. So what people usually do is the second one is a subset of the first. Um, so they can they they basically they they divide the first the first two data sets in two. Uh, so usually a ratio of 70, 30%, 70% for training and 30% for testing. So they, they know that the predictive data, but you need to have a lot of more data than you know my, my 40 tickets of the restaurant. But that's it, you know, that's, that's, that's a thing. So it's as simple as that. So machine learning is easy. What is not easy is picking the right algorithm, but for if you're a data engineer and you want to do machine learning, it's that easy as what I showed you. So it's time for conclu to, to conclude. So really, um, let, let's look let's look at where we are and, and on where we can go from there. Here's my big data scenario. Um, I've got data, and the first step is I'm going to ingest this data. After I ingest this data, the data is Consider raw data. That, that's how I call raw data. Okay, so that's that's if you go back to the restaurant to the example of the restaurant, I've got all the tickets. That's that's a crappy data. It's there's no there's barely no data quality on it. It's it it sucks. Um, you will find in the literature other name for this raw data. You can have it. People call that sometimes zone. So you've got the staging zone, the landing zone. Uh, sometimes call it the bronze data. Or some people call it the swamp zone when they're building data lake. That's that's data you could use, but it's it requires more work. Then you apply your data quality rules as we did. Okay, here's with via UDF, but you don't have to do it via UDF. It could be something else, it could be just spark functions. At this stage, you've got what I call pure data. Some other people call it the refinery zone, some people call it silver data pond sandbox or exploration zone it's really this at this stage the data is useful it's something you can share with different people okay if i go back to the restaurant example um i can predict for i can use it as a, in a predicting modeling but i could use it for the accounting people okay that's 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 where uh, they have a better idea of, of what the data is um, so this is this is the data you want to keep. The raw data you want to keep if you've got this and if you want to eventually keep it, but the pure data is really what you want to keep because that's what what that's really what you want to keep. And then the, you want to be able to use over and over and over. And then you can apply transformations. 
and and needless to say that actually a lot of the, the data quality rules are data quality transformations, but there is a transformation where you try to extract value from your data. And this is what I call the rich data. Um, you will also find the literature people calling that uh, production data, gold data, refined lagoon, or operationalizing, operationalizers, but it's not even pronounceable um, zone. Okay, so that's that's a kind of a really uh, crazy name. Rich data, easy, and then you can publish it. Okay, last last step of your of your pipeline, you publish it. You've got to do something, and that's actionable data. That's the outcome of it. Actionable data, you can give that to your boss. You can you can uh, give that to your CEO to do something. That's that's the data that people want. Before they want the data, but they they want they don't have, they want the, they they're more interested in the insight that is coming from the actionable data, and the actionable the actionable data could become your pure data in another process as well, or be part of your lake. And speaking of lake, um, there's a new concept coming out, um, which is being pushed right now uh, about about Spark as a lake house. Okay, this extend the idea of the I would say the Spark as an operating system. If you look at the bottom part, uh, we've looked at data sources today. We look, we mainly work with files, but you can have databases, systems, or even streams, which are being ingested in Apache Spark. And sometimes you, you want you want data at Apache Spark to be available like right away, uh, and that's the role of this new piece of software on the left uh, on the west here, called Delta Lake and Delta Engine. Delta Lake is a database, a relation, an ACID database, so all transaction blah 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 thing uh, that sits next to Apache Spark. And that's very useful when you start to have very complex uh, data pipelines where you want to kind of save things and start things from a, from a database without having a complex, a compl complex process for ingesting the Delta Lake there. Delta Engine is the engine on top of the database, the storage part. That's, that's rather new, been introduced by Databricks in June of this year. To process the data, you've got two things you can use of course, all the APIs and all the custom programs I've showed you today, you can use something called MLflow for machine learning uh, because you're also doing, machine learning can be more complex than the basic example I showed you. Or you can use something that what uh, we've introduced today as advanced auto parts and look at my cap. Um, it's uh, data in the fast lane. Okay, so, so that's a way to script operations for Spark to be super efficient, to not have to code. It's almost a no code solution for Apache Spark. And that's how you process data. And then you've got to consume the data, the outcome on the north part of this graph here. And you've got a very interesting thing. On the east part, you've got all the data engineering once more, data engineering people put the data in all the databases, in files, in other systems, in streams. And you can chain that. For data science, I want to consume that in Jupyter or, data, or Zeppelin there. Or you can look at solutions like Redash, which directly plug into Apache Spark, and which is uh, a very interesting tool where this targeted towards business users. So business users, instead of having this complex thing, they can do self service using Redash on Apache Spark and Delta Engine. Look, worse, worse, worse having a look. So key takeaways. I hope that after this presentation, uh, even if it's 5 p.m. Um, and we're all completely washed out after a day of learning, I hope that you find that big data is easier than you think at the beginning. And I think that Java is the way to go, or Python, if you're more into data science team side. And uh, and if you insist, you can use R and Scala, but really, okay. I think you've got all the new vocabulary for using Spark. You know what a data frame is, you know what a Spark session is. Um, you've got at least one friend, me, uh, and uh, and and we we can we can we can chat about Spark. I think that Spark is fun. I hope I hope I managed to to to, to share this fun with you regarding Spark. Uh, data in the fast lane is an awesome data pipelining tool. Uh, I really really wish you 
you you you look at it and uh, tell us uh, us uh, adventure reports how, how we did with that. And as you can see, Spark is also very easily extensible with the UDF functions uh, we, we did. So just going further with that, uh, you can contact me on Twitter at JG Perrin uh, or on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, if you contact me on LinkedIn, um, just mention that you went to the talk there, otherwise I, I, I have a tendency to ignore. Um, the Spark user mailing list on the Spark website is really great as well. The community on Stack Overflow like everything on Slack Overflow is growing and it's very interesting as well. And if you're in the triangle area, you can look at the fb.com slash uh, that's on Facebook. We've got a triangle spark uh, meetup uh, where we we meet uh, every other month roughly uh, talking about, about Spark. And, uh, uh, and and nowadays with COVID, we've got plenty of recordings. And uh, so that's that's a, another another avenue for learning things about Spark. And uh, finally, uh, uh, finally, also to get to get to go to go further, you can you can buy my book. And I have no thing is here is here's a you know uh, uh, a discount a discount to get to get the book cheaper. But if you're super fast, you can use uh, the free uh, the free book. Uh, uh, you can get one free book for all this audience, all of you that went there. Yeah, you know. That always works. It's a lot of work, so I'm just giving one book. Okay, so I hope you have your screenshot is uh, and uh, ready to capture it. So, and that's it. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope I hope you enjoyed it. You're I hope you're not as tired as I am. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can join me on on Data Friday. So I've I've I'm. I'm also now a YouTuber if I listen to my kids. Uh, and I've got a show called Data Friday. And uh, it's um, it's a talk about 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 data, obviously. And it's usually on Fridays. Sometimes it's, uh, uh, yeah, this, you miss, uh, Kira, you missed a uh, second to last. This. Was this this one you missed? There's a code. OK, yeah, this one. OK. Um, so uh, yeah, so Data Friday is a, is a video blog I'm, I'm, I'm doing. So sometimes I'm just talking to myself, uh, a bit like right now. Um, and sometimes I'm also having guests and uh, we do fun stuff together with, with, with data. So I really uh, hope to see you uh, either at a live event or on a, in the comments on my YouTube channel. Having said that, uh, thank you very much. Uh, no problem, uh, no problem, Kira. Uh, and uh, so, if you've got any questions, uh, the floor is yours, uh, and uh, and I'm happy we finish a little earlier.